Welcome to this video about the Darlington Pair ULN2803 where we take a look on how to wire it. In case you missed the first video, the Darlington Pair basic video, make sure to watch this in advance to fully understand all the experiments and wiring instructions we will cover in this video. So let's dive right into it. So in the middle you have your IC which should look something like this in your data sheet. You have those internals given here. Obviously this pattern will repeat over and over again until the very last one. Those internals are simplified and that's not how it actually looks like inside of the IC. I just put them here on the board for you to orientate if you're looking at your own data sheet and your own circuit. So the way this basically works is you have your orientation mark here at the top you have the pins 1 to 8, which are your input pins. So that's where you connect your GPIO from your microcontroller or microcomputer like the Raspberry Pi, ESP or Arduino. You have your ground on your microcomputer or microcontroller that is connected to the ground, which is pin number 9 in this case, of your IC. And then you have the COM port, which is connected to the VCC, to the power supply. And you have the output pins, which are 11 to 18 in this case. So while it's quite natural to connect your input pins to the GPIO from your signal and the output pins to your load and obviously ground to ground and come to your power supply, it's a bit unnatural that you connect actually the ground pin of your load to the output pin of your IC. So that's where a lot of people got sidetracked, where they connect the output pin of the IC to the plus of the load, which is then obviously not working. But why is it not working? The reason is that the IC here is as soon as it's getting a signal not putting through the COM, the power supply voltage level to the output pin, it's actually doing the opposite. It's pulling down the output pin to ground. So every time you get a signal here in the input, the IC will make sure that the output pin is pulled to ground. So in this case, closing the circuit by connecting your load to ground and not by connecting your load to the power supply to 5 volt or 12 volt or 24 volt, whatever you want to run your circuit with. Important to note is that the voltage level of the signal can be independent from the voltage level of your power supply. So while you may have 3.3 volts or 5 volts as a signal towards the Darlington transistor, you can have the Darlington pair itself supplied with 5, 12 or 24 volts or whatever other voltage is in between or given in the data sheet. Just be aware that since you're supplying your Darlington pair with the same voltage as you supply your load, you should make sure that your load can actually accept the voltage and it's not a too high of a voltage for your load. In my case, it's an LED. So in case I want to go from five to 12 volts power supply, I have to make sure to adjust the resistor accordingly. So taking a look at our little experiment, we have in the middle the ULN2803 which is basically the standard Darlington transistor. Connected to our breadboard, we have the power supply, which is in our case, five volts, and we have our ground connection here. Our power supply is connected to the load, which is the resistor, or in our case, two resistors and the actual LED. And the same power supply is also connected to the COM port. So it's directly connected to our Darlington pair in the middle and supplying our Darlington pair and our load with the same voltage at the same time. Additionally, I wired up a voltmeter so we can see the voltage drop across our load. So it's not measured against ground, it's measuring the voltage drop across our load, so the resistors and the LED in total, not against ground. Last but not least, we have the yellow cable here, which is representing our GPIO, which is sending a 3.3 volt signal. All of the voltages are supplied by our power supply. You can't see here, it's situated on the left hand side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug in our signal and from there on the input of the Darlington pair gets a high and therefore should enable our LED to light up by pulling the output pin of the Darlington pair onto ground, which is basically closing the circuit because our LED is already supplied with voltage so it's only missing the ground. So let's give it a try. And we can see we have our LED lighting up. And we can also see that the voltage drop across our load is now actually 4.1 volt. We're supplying with 5 volts, so the rest of the voltage is being lost within 
the connections and mostly inside of our Darlington pair. As mentioned in our Darlington pair basic video that the voltage drop within a Darlington resistor is actually twice as high as in a normal resistor, easily adding up to more than one volt. Dimming down the lights a bit so you can see the LED better, we will again unconnect and reconnect the LED so you can see how the voltage behaves as well as how the LED lights up. Also interesting, if we have the LED lit up permanently, so turned on permanently, and we measure against ground, so let's measure the voltage against ground, we have the five volts because we're obviously measuring only the supply voltage which is connected directly here. So also if we deconnect our GPIO, our signal here, we will still get the same 5 volts because the load is always supplied with 5 volts. It's only pulled down to ground. So we close the circuit that is already supplied by connecting it to ground. We are not actively supplying voltage to our circuit if we want to turn it on because it's already supplied. I hope you understood everything about the Darlington pair, how it's working and also how to wire the special or default ULN2803 so you can apply it to your own circuit and to your own project. Thanks for watching and see you next time.